Recording. Are, are, are we rolling? Hmm. I had a whole thing I was going to do, and you, you just <laughs> you fucking bulldozed right in. <laughs> Are we recording? <laughs> but, and I'm sitting there going, next week, <laughs> boiled again. Damn you, Crawford. We keep trying, man. Uh, how that, you doing, bro? Good. I'm doing great. Let's act like we haven't been talking for 30 minutes before you hit record. <laughs> they don't know how long we've been talking. It could have been you know an what? hour. It could have been two minutes. They don't know about us, and they don't know about love. They don't know. That's right. Is that a Bangles song? I don't know. Is that a remake? I don't know. Is it the Bangles or the Bingles? Ooh. Is there a difference? Who likes the Bingles? Uh, hmm. I, well. Like two people? When Collinsworth was there and I was in seventh grade. <laughs> <I liked. laughs> when Crumb Rye's leg broke. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. That was painful, wasn't it? It was. We've got a new angle. <laughs> Showed that. That no. was the best thing in the, no. the whole Super Bowl that year. Nope, 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 nope. Mm -mm. As, as Tiger-based mascots go, they have the best jerseys and helmets. I'll have to say. Okay. And there are a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot. I don't understand there why. There are a lot of Tigers. Well, Tigers are cool. Okay. I th what I think is cool is your unbranded coffee cup. Your solid white. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hard to tell if it's big or small. Because you have those dainty little big? hands. Small. And it's like, yeah, there you go. Somebody, somebody knows <laughs> the magic of video. <laughs> to everybody listening, yeah. Gene pulled his cup away. Yes. From the what do you call those things? Camera. Camera, and then close to the camera. In the slide. I, know, I know all the terms. I know all the equipment. I've I've done this before, so just go ahead and let me know what you want me to do. But uh, <laughs> cool. I got you, man. I'm in. I'm in. So uh, <sighs> what's yeah, up, man? Here, here comes the segue. I thought you were going for it. We don't have segues. We have hard no. segues. Well, if we want to retain our clients, I meant to say listeners. Damn it! Mm. I blew it. Hold but. on, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's roll that back. Well, Gene, if we want to retain our listeners. We should probably have better segues. Yeah. Um, or retainers. Hey, you know, funny, last week's newsletter was all about retainers. What mm. a polarizing thing. You Isn't think they were RFPs, <laughs> the way some people get what? irritated with retainers. Well, I, I don't understand how <laughs> it could be polarizing. But yeah, so somebody wants to give you a certain amount of money per month or quarter or year or whatever. Take it. To do some work, a consistent cash flow, which we all know that one of the biggest issues with this whole industry is feast or famine. I thought that was the holy grail. was <laughs> to like get that income coming in every month. I thought that was the whole reason why <laughs> we all got like distracted by trying to make products for all those years and then realized, Hey, we're a services company. We can't make products. Well, I, I thought that was the whole point. Yeah. So I remember we did retainers probably two years in, we started realizing this was kind of a cool thing. We, well, what we did wasn't, I think we did something close to a retainer because some people like, here's the thing. If at the end of a month, there are hours left over, those don't roll over into the next month. You gotta make That's sure that's not a retainer. Right. That's a prepayment. Right. That is not a retainer. A retainer, if they have not committed to you the work, if they have not gotten it to you, then you still keep that money. Now, if uh, you have gone over what you committed to, they do pay that. Right. So, but the difference is you've committed to some sort of could be a lower rate. It could be Absolutely. for a lot of people. What it really is, it's not even about the rate. It's about um, availability. Mm -hmm. So they have guaranteed you a certain amount of money per month, so that they're at the front of the line all yep. the time. Yep. Right. And and I do want to. <clears throat> I was making making silly. You are so funny, Gene. When you make when you make the silly. Um, 
I, we we started doing it about a year and a half ago, two years ago, but we don't do straight retainers for work in terms of, I mean, we build websites. So we don't do the retainer for the building of the website, right? That's always like, right. we'll either do it hourly or we'll do it uh, value-based or whatever, you know. Nine you times don't out do value-based. Nine times out of 10, they're like, I got this much, take it or leave it. And we're like- That's we'll called fixed it. bid. There you go. go. Ahead. Um, anyway- <laughs> Value-based is where you would say one million dollars. <laughs> that was if Dr. I, Evil happened to be from Venezuela. That's one time. Enjoy. That was pretty good. Um, Thank you. We've, we've tried that. It doesn't work. Um, no. Anywho, what we'll do, we call it a services retainer. So what, okay. we found, what we found was we'll build the website and we'll go, hey, it's built on this thing called a content management system. And I'm going to spend five hours training you and everybody you work with how to use it. And you can do whatever you want. And then guess what? They go. They want you to do it. They go, I need to add this blog post, add it. And then you, you're like, this is going to be two hours. And then they go, that's too much. And then you know, and it's bullshit. So they're going to call you anyway, <laughs> is what we found. So yeah. we were just like, hey, let's just have them prepay for that, that they're going to call us anyway. And that's what we started doing. And it's just kind of grown and grown. And we've gone back to the same clients and gotten more and more and more. And, you know, now we have pretty nice, I'd say, services contracts for mm -hmm. X amount of hours a month that we do random crap on their website for them. Um, and I like it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, and so if, if there are hours left over at the end of the month, does that matter? S some We have a couple of clients that we will just because we really like them. And we know oh, yeah, that like... Yeah. We know that let's say they pay for like 10 hours a month. They don't always have something to do that month. So we'll say, okay, well, you know, you're not really updating your website every day like some of these other clients are. So we'll let you save up like a quarter and then we'll do something for you um, or, or some idea that you have. Or we'll go to them with an idea and say, hey, you got these 30 hours. We think you should do this. And nine times out of 10, they're like, do it. And we just do it. Right. So, and then you can also like maintenance retainers, service retainers. Yeah. One of the most important things about a retainer is to identify what's not covered. Like we always said, if there's <laughs> any level of discovery, if there's any level of new code, if there's any level of mm -hmm. design rounds or any kind of creative, then that is not covered. Right. That is not covered in this. This is more about ongoing upkeep, maintenance. Uh, there may be some functionality changes because we find something that's really cool and we want to do it and we'll, yep. we'll get your approval. Yep. But the reason why it's polarizing, uh, because I remember like Engine had a reputation for being very creative. Okay. Like Varric Rossetti. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bruce Cook, uh, <coughs> Travis Schmeiser, Stockton Eller. Like these were super creative humans. Mm. And they were, I mean, it, it was just amazing, right? So retainers to a lot of people are more like production oriented companies uh, who have, they're, they're maximizing the relationship to get the longevity out of the, you know, I guess make the most out of the life cycle of that client. So I remember being at South by Southwest, I'd been invited to this lunch. Uh, I still don't know why. <laughs> um, Jeffrey Zeldman was having some people get together and we went to some Mexican place and uh, I still remember they had, it was the first time I ever saw the Coronas upside down in a margarita. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like going, okay, welcome Ooh. to South by. Right. This is what we're doing. Welcome back to college 10 years later. Um, and I, I went out the person. I'll just say Andy. Okay. And then you can figure it out. But he literally cornered me against a wall and another wall, which is called a corner. Mm. And he, he said, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do the accent. He but he basically said, "I understand you're doing retainers," and I was like, "Yeah, they're kind of awesome." And he was like, "That's the death of creativity. When you do retainers, it's the death of creativity." And I said, "Actually, it's the beginning of sleeping at night." Yeah, it's also the and beginning the, of fuck off. The more that we sleep, the more we get to do. Well, we I had been. I didn't say that. No, no, but for whatever reason. Right. And part of it was because of that team that, that I was with. Right. Okay. And at this table, like, I, th I think Jeffrey was kind of collecting people who were making a difference, which means you've got a level of visibility, which means I think we were saying it was okay to do retainers. 
Well, and that was a negative thing because that meant we were saying it was okay to have a relationship versus being project based, which was also right. a big deal. Right. And and this was also in 2005. So totally different time, different mindset. You know, th this is something that uh, I don't know how I'm sure everybody thinks about this, maybe not in this way. So, you know, I own a gym and early on in the process of running this gym, we had members who the relationship that we had with them was very transactional, right? It was like, Hey, you pay for a class. You come in and do a class. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's cool. But it, after a while, it, we begin to suffer because we had a lot of turnover, 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 turnover. It wasn't until we decided to not really go that transactional route, but go the transformational route in that we would want someone, we want to work with you for more than a year, more than six months, right? And that's kind of how we sold them, how we structured the gym contracts and everything like that. And that has really stuck. And we sort of applied a lot of that thinking to the web business mm -hmm. um, right around the same time. And it's worked there too. I, I was stuck for so long since I started my business until, man, two or three years ago of just having this transactional business of like, hey, we got a website. Let's get it done. Give it to them on to the next client. Right. And that's you can pay your bills with that. But after a while, it's like shit, we know everyone in town. We got to go, to, we got to go to another town. How do we go to another town? Like, and it's just like, it just, you never have enough. Right. And, and we, a couple of years ago, we went, look, let's stop looking at these things as transactional and try to build, like you're saying, we're trying to build relationships and get, get more work from the same client over and over and over and really work with them as a partner, help them grow, you know, cause these are businesses and, and, government entities and nonprofits that they have long-term goals. Let's try to find out what their long-term goals are and how we, how we can fit into that. And that's made all the difference in terms of, like you said, being able to sleep at night, <laughs> Yeah, not sitting there scared shitless where, you know, September's payroll is going to come from. Like, you know, we, we know, Hey, we got to find a couple of bigger projects, but we know basically, you know, we're getting income from these clients that we're taking care of. Let's take care of them. And that, well, and, is, that feels good. Yeah. And that, and that was the big shift, right? For If you look at the origin of a lot of shops, and I've mentioned this before on the show, but you either came out of an advertising agency or a software development firm. Like mm -hmm. those were the two origin stories for most web shops in the, in the late 90s mm -hmm. on in. Um, that was definitely true with us. And we had seen that advertising agencies valued the relationship over the quality of the work. Also early on, there was a lot of confusion around how a website was built because people were doing it a lot of different ways. Some people were using PageMaker, mm -hmm. right? Some people were building things from scratch. Like you, you had all of these different ideas around how it was done. And a lot of people were just taking money and, uh, and going oh, yeah. dark. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. So, but, but the idea that the work was more important than the relationship was almost, and also there was so much work. Yeah. Like when you get into the early 2000s after the bubble burst and people were like, well, we still need a website. It was like every company on the planet suddenly realized yellow pages might not be a thing mm -hmm. and we might need to do a website. Kids, Google it. I'm yeah, telling you had, the truth. And they had no idea what that stuff cost. No. Back then. So, I mean, I mean, I that was it. Yeah. yeah. I remember working on projects <laughs> that now would be like five grand. Back then it was like 50. It yeah. was like, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you would have, like, we, we were working uh, with a lot of real estate people, like uh, uh, real estate companies, because MLS integration and all these types of things. Mm -hmm. Like, you look at Zillow now, there was no crap like that, right? No. Everybody uh -huh. was trying to do their own thing. But I remember going to meet with the owner of this really big, like, Southeast real estate company. And he said, hey, we just did the coolest thing. I'm like, yeah? He goes, yeah, we just signed up for this thing that is, it's like 300 bucks a month and it's going to show us exactly how well the website works so that we can start having metrics and we can figure things out, mm -mm. right? <laughs> so somebody had sold them Google Analytics for 300 bucks a month, which even then was free. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him, I said, you know, it's probably not worth a lawsuit 
but watch this. And I brought up on his computer, Google Analytics, and I showed him that we had already connected it. And I said, you know what we're charging you for that? Nothing, because it's free. And we right. want to see as well. And, and it, that, that was the thing. There was a lots of charlatans in the day, Gene. Mm -hmm. And they were out there like doing all this. So the relationships were tougher back then too, because there was a lot of mistrust because what we did felt like magic, mm -hmm. which you could charge a lot for magic. Um, but so retainers, when you were able to get them, the other challenge that happened, we ended up landing Epic Games. And I remember this was a amazing thing for us. Uh, I had always wanted a video game company. I liked Epic Games. I really wanted Naughty Dog. But what ended <laughs> up happening was uh, we were going against a great shop, Vigit, right? Brian Williams running that out of DC. And they were going for Epic Games. We were going for Epic Games. Um, they were going in as a creative uh, kind of powerhouse. We were going in as a please anything, just say yes to us. We don't care. Like we did not stand up and go toe to toe with them, which we probably should have. And Brian's a good friend and he's part of the bureau community. And But we went in with a retainer and uh, we ended up getting all the corporate work and all that kind of stuff because that was ongoing. So we didn't have any of the fun. We did get to do some fun creative stuff later. Uh, but what I remember is that retainer lasted almost two years. It was a monthly retainer. There was a tremendous amount of work that needed to be done. We were expression engine people and they, they were all about expression engine and we had to do all kinds of like, you know, sandboxes for them to play mm -hmm. in and things like that. But what I remember was we had to rotate out the team because the thing about a retainer is if you're working the same team with the same client, like, okay, so period three is a little smaller, but we were at that time about probably 30 people. Ooh. And if you right. have five people working nonstop on the same stuff yeah. all yep. the time and the projects right. aren't even changing, you have to start rotating through. And for the client who is going to pattern on somebody in that group as their person, you have to say, look, we're going to start having more issues with QA. Mm -hmm. We're going to have things go right. live that are a little right. buggy if we don't rotate out the team. So every month we're going to rotate one of these five people out, right? The other four will know what's going on. They can bring the new person along. If it was a smaller retainer, like maybe there were just two people on it, we would bring a third on to ride shotgun for a month to replace, then let that one mm. person out. And, and the team could say, no, I want to stay on. Like that was fine. If, if there wasn't issues that were starting to happen, if the work wasn't starting to get a little wow. bit shaky um, or if they weren't starting to get a little cranky, right? Might happen. Like, that was fine. But that's mm. another thing with retainers, especially long-term ones. You have to set that expectation. Right. That you're not buying, you're buying a team, but you're not necessarily buying this team. These people. Yeah. That's right, not so, how that's not how it works in the so, world. So so who made that call? Who would who would be the one making that call that like, hey, we gotta, you know, some stuff's not right or whatever. How does this we gotta change it out? Oh, for us it was scheduled. Oh, oh, you just scheduled. Yeah. So we would say, okay, uh, we're coming up on April. Fred, this is your final month on this project. We're gonna rotate you out. Um, and we'll we'll bring Jeff on, right? And then so so that was the kind of thing that it was it was planned in advance by whoever was managing the projects. Mm. So whoever's doing the staffing on that stuff would manage that. And the other thing was sometimes it, it I mean it wasn't like a perfect okay this is May 1st and now because you have people who are who are on the tail end of finishing something so sometimes it might have been okay well we're about to launch this new single sign on for blah 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 we'll get to the end of that get to the end of the QA on that, and then we'll transition off so mm. somebody can go on something else. Because the other thing is people are going to want to take vacations. People are going to want nah. all that. Kind of, so rude. You stay at your desk and you work. Ah, exactly. Fun is for the weekends. Yeah. I'll bring you food. Just don't get up. All right. So what about when these things start to go south? Um, you got some You know, you some being nice stuff further south than you, I really hate that expression, Gene. And you're in South Carolina, so technically you're further south than Florida. But why do we say going south? That's like, it's not cool. I live here. I know why. Going, uh, yeah, yeah, shit. So do I. Never mind. I've been to Florida too. <laughs> um, Let me pull that one back. <laughs> kick, kick, kick. Uh, yeah. So, so you mentioned specifically calling out what is and what is I not. I just went like this. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I okay. like making faces in the camera. I see myself. There you go. 
for those of you listening at home, Carl, I don't know what you call that. I jutted out my lower jaw. <laughs> Carl is what we call in the business losing his mind. Oh, man. That's so long ago. Not slowly. No. So what do you do when a retainer starts to fall apart? Yeah. So you've got, uh, make sure you list what is and what is not included. First mm -hmm. off, that's something to do. We're For talking sure. about like, like trying to prevent shit from going south. Yeah. Well, I mean, so you have to realize that any kind of long-term relationship like that's going to hit bumps. And especially mm -hmm. when on the client side, they're going to have turnover. On your side, you're going to have turnover. Right. Um, so, so the people who've been rolling with that relationship for so long, there's going to be transition. Somebody new may come in and come in and want to do something different. Somebody on the client side may so come in and bring in their own people. That's where we've that's where we've had a lot of problems on with us is that we'll have a retainer, a relationship for a year, and then there'll be a new team member on their side. Yeah. And then we're like, oh, a new person. We're like, work with them, but we won't ever talk to the other people. Uh, see, I think that's the thing. So for us, what worked really well with Epic was, I want to say it was really weird, but it was like every six weeks because that was their release cycle for things, I think. Um, but we would have a call with our team at Epic once every six weeks, and that call would last for hours, right? We, we would Because we were just kind of going through stuff. And if there was somebody new that was coming in, they would get introduced on that call. Uh, on our side or on their side. And we would share a little bit about their specialties, their background, ideas they may have that we're going to look at in the future. Uh, this was a thing that um, we we had the creative director camp last week. And there's this idea I've been playing around with with a couple of people called a, a time capsule, which is like for onboarding. And I think this this originated from some of the stuff we did with retainers with Engine was when you first come onto a project, write down all the things that you think could make it better and then keep that shit in an envelope and keep it to yourself. And once you've been on the project for like four weeks, open that up and see if maybe now you understand why back then you thought that, but mm. now you've been indoctrinated in. And I think it works if you come onto a new team at any point in time, you're mm. going to be like, you know, why do we do that? It doesn't make sense. What if we, you know, this would. And, and the thing is, everybody probably knows that. There's just some reason. But then again, there may be some nugget of joy that like four weeks later, you look at it and go, you know, actually, maybe we should back everything up every night. There is nothing I want more in life than more nuggets of joy. Well, sir, I am not <laughs> going to go there because I had some stuff to say. So you've got like in the in the email, um, get agreement on terms, document the process, agree on frequency, schedule meetings. Mm -hmm. Those are all cool. I think at the end of the day, I'm reading this and I'm thinking back to where we've made errors, it really comes down to making sure you have whatever in place on your team to have discipline throughout that retainer. Because I think a lot of these shit falls apart when you're not disciplined because it's okay. really easy. Because I think back to one particular client we had where we had some issues recently and it's because we were supposed to have a monthly meeting and we were like, for like three months in a row, we're like, eh, we're busy man, we'll just meet next month. And the next month came, we're like, oh, well, they're busy. We'll just meet next month. And then before you know it, it's been four months. You haven't talked to them in over a quarter. And then they go, why are we paying these guys? Yeah. yeah. And you're like, shit, we got to meet with them. And you're like, you know, you're trying to make, <laughs> and it's, if you would have just been disciplined and saying, oh, you're busy today, yeah. well, we'll meet tomorrow or we'll meet next, making sure that those things happen, making sure you're talking, making sure you're taking the time to send those email updates. I think that's I think that's really the key because it's so easy to not be disciplined. Yeah, well, I mean, again, we we shared this earlier in the show uh, when we were talking about communication. But those first strike emails we'd send out on Mondays, those were proof of what got done the week before. I see that's what people want. It, it, they kind of want that activity mm -hmm. stream. Like mm -hmm. if if you're looking through Twitter and you're just seeing stuff come through, you know that there's energy. You know there's something going on there. Um, it's the same right. thing when you're working together, they just kind of want to see that stuff's happening. And if they decide that they want to, you know, drill in and look closer, they're going to see what it is and why it was. But if you don't have that scheduled communication, then yeah, they're going to fill in the gaps with stuff mm -hmm. that's not real. And then they are going to be like, you know, is this really where we should be putting our money? And then from the shop side, I think you should use those quarterly twice a year, whatever, to say, is this really the value that, or are we getting compensated fairly? Um, yeah, or, both sides. 
Yeah. Or are we not doing enough? Because I know we've backed out of retainers because we felt like there wasn't enough to do. Right. You know, we, we were like, hey, mm -hmm. we, we don't want to have to set this aside and then something awesome and new comes in and we can't do it right. because we've committed this time to you while we're sitting here playing video games. Mm -hmm. We just did that in both instances. We have one client where we raised it because we were, you know, we were doing a little bit more. And then in one, it was like, man, we haven't like done anything for you in like six months. So we, I mean, we cut it in half. Um, and it's just how it is. Because yeah. like you said, you're going to, you're going to get another client. You're going to need room for them, you know, but th the other thing I like is that since we've been doing that, it really makes us look at new clients. And when you're in that transactional cycle, you're just like, sure, I'll do whatever. Like I'll build whatever. Yeah. I just need, I just need a project. We need to fill this time. So you're like just taking projects. This, we actually had one client. We were like, I mean, we could use the work, but they kind of seem like douchebags, you know? <laughs> so we're like, nah, we just wait for the next one because we could, we could, we have that. There's cushion. always going to be another douchebag. <laughs> well, yeah. So let's just wait on the next one. Well, and it, and we were right. It turns out that they were just kind of jerking us around in terms of yeah. talking to us in the first place. And we were like, well, we were right. So, you know, all the red flags were firing and we finally listened and, um, you know, we're, we're better because we don't have to deal with that shit. Well, you, you have to look up. I mean, we say that all the time. It's like, if you're just looking at the bottom line number of what you're going to be able to put in the bank, right, right, you're not looking where you're going. Right. Right. It's like you tell kids all the time, look, where are you going? Look, watch where you're going. Yeah. That's because you're going to bump into shit. And, and the same thing, if you're just looking down at the, at the invoice all the time, although my, my absolute favorite thing, I remember we were, we were meeting with somebody and this was a, you know, definitely a red flag. <laughs> this person said, you charge that much? <laughs> uh, and, and I said, and you won't believe it, but people pay it. Yeah. <laughs> and they said, well, I refuse to pay this estimate. Well, then, and I was no. like, yeah, don't worry. Nobody's ever paid an estimate. We send invoices. <laughs> and oddly enough, Gene, that was the end of that relationship. I don't oh. know what happened, but <laughs> I think, I think you're better off. Oh man, for sure. But I mean, I would just say this with retainers. You know what? I think they're part of a healthy diet. Right. It, it maybe maybe you shouldn't be full on retainers. Maybe maybe there's an aspect of it that's value based. Things that you've done again and again, and you understand, and you bring so much knowledge that you can make somebody better. I think when it comes to identity development, I think that should not be anything on a retainer, right? Like that needs oh, to yeah. be its own thing. That needs to because there's so much emotion and passion, especially if right. a founder is going through that process. Yeah. At the same time, if it's maintenance oriented. Right. I think retainers are amazing, mm -hmm. right? Or if it's ongoing uh, updates and upgrades, or you're going through a, a six month testing cycle of trying to improve mm -hmm. conversions at checkout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's retainer shit. Yeah, that's, you don't have to scope that. Yeah. Um, for, well, wait, you know what I'm saying? Um, no, Gene, right. I don't. No, I know so you're I looking at the clock and you're like going, it's time to, we got to wrap it up, Carl. I say, God damn, I think you know what I'm saying. I don't know what you're saying, Gene. <sighs> How Sorry. many hours do you work in a week? Me personally? In a day. <laughs> Me personally? I don't know, dude. <laughs> Is the newsletter due? Because that's going to take longer. Honestly, I'm, I'm probably about somewhere around four and a half. I mean, like that doesn't mean I'm not staring at things. Right. I'm just not actively working. Right. Um, but I'd say probably about four and a half hours a day. And, uh, and I know what you're looking at. You're looking yep. at the, the the hot link, hot link of the week. Ah. And it it was the perfect number of article. hours. Yeah. Yeah. From believe it or not, Wired Magazine. Which, first of all, that was a great name in its day. It was an awesome book, a magazine back in its day. But Wired. I don't think that's what we're going for anymore. I think you call it right. wireless. Wire, wired, wire, wireless. Wired, wired lizard. <laughs> wireless. Wild lizard magazine. I'm going to start a magazine online called Wireless. I are think you, you should. Are you on board? But I am. <laughs> I'm 100% on board. It's just going to be an RSS feed of wired. But it's wireless. I like. <laughs> I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. <laughs> Tee hee hee. Genius. It's madness. Okay. So their article though was around what is the perfect amount of time per day to work? Yeah. And what can you really do? And I think this is really critical right now because everything's in, in motion. 
people can't find the people to come on their teams. A lot of startups are starting to get funding because money's coming off the sidelines and mm -hmm. loans are cheaper. So people are getting funded and they are increasing the cost of talent by offering people 30% over what they're currently getting paid. So you have to start thinking, okay, we have to work a little differently. What do we have to ask people to commit to? Um, there's so much stuff that's, I th it feels like we're on the edge of a major shift in the way that services are done, digital services, creative services. And I think part of that's going to be, we need to rethink the workday. We need to say, you know what, this, this eight hour thing, this 32 hours a week billable and eight hours, you know, back to the damn Google 20% rule bullshit. It's like all of that kind of stuff, I think, is about to shift. And, and this article makes a case for a five hour day. Mm -hmm. but, but there's risks, right? Did you read the article, Gene? There's inherent risks in everything. Oh, that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, but the yeah, risks I, are... I like the part where they're like the the eight hour workday is fairly new. The Ford Motor Company rolled this out a hundred years yeah. ago. I was like, that's not new. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> I mean, in the relative timeline of the, the Earth, life yes, of humans. But... <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's interesting because they mentioned that, and I thought about it. I was like, yeah, three shifts of eight hours. It's twenty four hours because mm -hmm. Ford wanted that. You know, twenty four hours on the on the yep. damn assembly line, always yep. cranking it out, always fresh. So you weren't going to have a bunch of buggy stuff start to come off. Right. But uh, but the, the thing about five hours that I think is interesting, and if you read that, and also if you study any level of uh, just kind of work research, focus research, like you yeah. know that if you are a creative person, you need blocks of uninterrupted time, right? Yes. Two hours, four hours. Every time you're interrupted, evidently you lose 15 minutes before you can get back into flow. That research is from, you know, decade or so ago. Mm -hmm. But to me, the thing that's the most critical is if you only have five hours, yes, your utilization is going to go up, but your stress level might too. And you're concerned that I've got to get this done now. Like people, a lot of people are going to, you know, four day weeks right now mm -hmm. and, you know, summer hours, right? Summer hours, we take Fridays off. We're out Fridays after lunch. We're, you know, that sort of thing. It's a similar take on it really to a five hour day. I think the four hour week or four hour week. All right, Tim Ferriss. I think the, the, uh, the four that was, day. That was also bullshit. It was just a title. Dude, whatever. he sold drugs on late night TV. That's a whole episode we'll get to. But this whole four day work week, I think works better because people aren't feeling the stress of if I stay over five hours. Right. I'm not going to get out. And also it's harder to schedule stuff. In our world, well, yeah. we read these things that say, and that was a popular link. Like that was the number one link in the newsletter. And we read that and we're like, let's do that. But then we don't realize that the rest of the world doesn't give a shit because we're doing client services. And if they want to have a call at four o'clock, but we only work until three. Yeah. What? what you going to do? Well, I mean, great shops will do it. And and the shops that are struggling will be like, okay, hmm. we'll, we'll get on the call. Well, Gene, you have that look on your face like you're supposed to be somewhere else. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean right now. I mean in your life. <laughs> I'm out. See ya. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just thinking about how I work, and and I don't know how I've gotten there. I, I've, I have no, I have no memory of how I've gotten where I am. But I would, I, I would put in a big, uh, big dose of luck. I think for you, I know you, I've seen you work and I think you've just gotten really lucky that I agree. You know, you landed where you did. Cause I don't know shit. Um, <laughs> Look at who you're doing a podcast with dude. Come on. Hey, totally out of it. <laughs> but like, I, I think I work probably like four or four and a half hours a day in terms of work. Yeah. And I, I have to get in early. I have to be at my desk by 8 AM cranking through stuff. Um, and then I'll use like the afternoons for like, to trying to talk to people or, you know, yeah. just random email ish or follow up stuff. Um, but in terms of work, it's gotta be in the morning. And when that's the, what's the definition of work, right? Because a lot of people would say you talking to other people is part of work. Yeah. So, so in that case, I mean, depending on the definition, I never stop or I barely start. <laughs> right. And I think, and, and that's the thing about the article is that different jobs 
require different types of uh, access, right? I mean, if you're an yeah. assembly line person or a There's fireman, no doubt. or if or you're a, a fireman, you're just there for 72 hours. I mean, yeah. you know, the whole four hour workday, it's kind of a privileged thing. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Well, I'm trying to think about it. It's definitely more. It's the white, office worker. White collar. Yeah, like it's definitely more white collar. You're digital. You're, I think we need yeah. a new term. Then uh, there probably is, and I just haven't read the article. The new term, not white collar, but there, there's like the digital producer. Oh, in there like is the, something. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I can't because remember. let's let's say you you manage twelve people who are all like digital producers. Your ass mm-hmm. ain't working four hours a day. You're there the whole time. They're there. Right. Or at least Again, you're on call. It's all based on the definition of work. Yeah. Yeah. How many hours so, did you put in? If you're a plumber, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Just my two cents. I Maybe. like it, but you I like only it. offered you a penny for your thoughts. Oh, man. So I'm keeping this extra <laughs> copper. That'll get you there. God, it's not even worth the copper it's printed on. Mm-mm. Minted on. <laughs> Well, any uh, any lasting or, or sorry, not lasting. Any hot takes you can leave me with? Lasting heat. You want some lasting heat? <laughs> I got a hot take for you. This shit is hard. Mm. You know, it's so many people think that they're not good at their jobs when they're doing digital services, when they're they're building stuff for clients. It's hard. It's not that you're not good at it. It's that it's really difficult, and mm. especially now if you're running a shop. You're struggling to keep your team. The great resignation is real and it's happening in digital services. People are coming back from vacation and leaving the company because that vacation was actually meeting with somebody else. I know five different shops right now that are going through that. I know one shop that lost two engineers on the same day, right? And they didn't even know each other, right? So you've got that going on. You're trying to figure out what you're gonna do with a lease that you can't get out of, but nobody's going back to work. You're trying to to get the right staff in place to be able to do the work that you have landed. It's tough. So yeah. my hot take for this week, cut yourself a damn break mm. because you're doing fine. This is just a really difficult time that you're doing a really difficult job. Thanks, man. Not you. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 Truth. I like that. I think that's how we should leave it. Oh, okay. (laughs) I thought we were leaving it. All right, everybody. Hey, be good out there. Don't do anything I wouldn't watch. (laughs) 